In the previous video, we saw how Microsoft Project Professional 2016 can be used in order to produce a Design Project Gantt chart. In this video, we're going to go through the same process, except this time we're using the cloud-based version of Microsoft Project. So if you don't have access to Microsoft Project through work or through college, then you can still access this facility. And you can actually use this software free of charge for a trial period. So listed on the left hand side, I have the same tasks that we had when we used Microsoft Project 2016. We have our planning tasks, reviewing design briefs, project selection, feasibility study and so on. We have our implementation tasks, further research, design sketches, design calculations and prototyping. We have a task for preparing a logbook and then we have our review tasks. So far, I've only added design report. We have a couple more tasks to add. So I click here, add task, project report. And underneath that, we have review project outcomes. And review personal performance. Now, if we were to find that we've missed any tasks, then we can always add additional tasks in here by simply clicking on the three dots alongside a given task and then insert a new task. So we can always update, add and remove tasks. There is also the option here to delete the task. But what we're going to do first of all is we're going to assign our subtasks so that within the planning section, we have a number of subtasks. And within the implementation section, we have a number of subtasks and so on. And this is exactly the same format that we followed when using project 2016. So first of all, we know that review design briefs is a subtask of planning. So once again, we click on the menu and we just go to make subtasks. So we're going to do this for all of the tasks underneath and we see that it's going to update accordingly. Now, if you recall, our market research was actually a subtask of our feasibility study. So we actually need to invent that further, make subtask. And in addition, our cost benefit analysis was a subtask of the feasibility study. So we need to make subtask and indent again. You'll notice there that once a task is indented, there is also the option to promote the subtask, which is the same as outdenting that task it will move that task under the preceding category. Next, we have our design specification, which is a subtask. Okay, so now we have all of our subtasks relating to planning, we can move into implementation. Each of our implementations are subtasks. Like so. Our logbook is going to remain as a separate task on its own and our review activities, we have the design report was a subtask of review. The project report was a subtask of review. And then underneath that, we have review project outcomes as a subtask of project report. And finally, review personal performance was a subtask of the project report. So we need to indent that twice also. Okay, so as we return back to the top, the next thing we want to do is to start assigning some start dates and some task durations to each of these activities. If we start at the very top, we have review design briefs. Now you'll recall from the previous video that we wanted this task to start on Monday, the 18th of November, and we wanted it to last just two days. Now there's a number of ways we can access this menu. We can either click on the three dots again, and go to open details, or you'll notice that open details is actually an option alongside the title. So we've just said that our start date is November the 18th, and we've said our duration is two days. But then we can X that off. And if we move back along, we'll see that that task has been added to our Gantt chart. Next we have project selection and we wanted project selection to start immediately after reviewing of the design briefs and we wanted it to last three days. So this time we're going to set the duration for three days, 
But instead of setting a start and end date, we're going to add a dependency. Now the dependency here is review design briefs. So if we begin to type review design briefs, we can see that that comes up as one of the options. So task two, review design briefs. And again, we'll X that off. And we see that those two tasks now run one after the other. They're linked as dependencies. In project 2016, rather than dependencies, the review design brief was called a predecessor of project selection, but the outcome's the same. Next, we had our feasibility study, and within our feasibility study, we had market research and we had cost benefit analysis. We said that the feasibility study couldn't start until project selection had been completed. So this time, we're going to assign our dependency and our dependency is project selection. So we can see that the weekend's been skipped and the feasibility study isn't due to start until after project selection. Now each of our subtasks here, we allocated 10 days to. Now we could open up the option again, or alternatively we can go to our Gantt chart and we can actually drag this across. So if we move on next to our cost benefit analysis, we also want this task to last 10 days. And what we see is because we didn't add any dependencies, both of those tasks start on the same date, the 25th of November, and both of them run concurrently or alongside each other. So now what we see is the feasibility study running for 10 days, sitting inside the planning task. Next, we have our design specification. Our design specification lasts for 10 days, but it can't start until our feasibility study is complete. So we add a dependency. We start writing feasibility study, it comes up as the option there. And you'll notice that the Gantt chart is updated. So what you should see here is this is very user friendly. We now have our planning lasting for 25 days or five weeks. And if we're ever unsure and we want to check that time scale out, all we need to do is open up the details for that task and it will tell us the duration. It's grayed out because it's constrained. Let's move on to implementation then. Our first implementation task is further research. So we can either set the details at the level of the implementation task or we can begin setting the details at the level of further research. Now further research can't start until the design specification has been complete and we specified that that was a two week or 10 day task. So again, if we go here, 10 days, add dependency. The other thing we can do here is select the task number seven or we can begin to type the name of the task. So there's lots of different ways that this can be done. Next we have our design sketches. Our design sketches also have a duration of 10 days and they can't start until further research has been completed. So down here, further research, task nine. And each time we see that the Gantt chart is being updated accordingly. Okay, next we have our design calculations lasting 15 days and starting after design sketches. Add dependency, task 10, or design sketches, whichever you prefer. And finally, in this section, we have prototyping. Now, we said that prototyping had a long lead time of 10 weeks, so 50 days. And we said it couldn't be started until our calculations have been complete. Calculations, task 11. And there we have all of the details for implementation. So next we have our logbook, which we want to run alongside implementation. If it's running alongside implementation, it can't start until planning has been completed. And its duration is going to be the same as all of implementation, which we saw previously was 85 days. So now what we see 
is that our logbook runs alongside all of those implementation tasks. Our last couple of sections then, we have the design report, which we said would run alongside prototyping. So it has the same duration as prototyping, 50 days. And it starts immediately after design calculations. The design calculations precede prototyping. And once again, we see our Gantt chart update accordingly. Finally, there are two subtasks within our project report. We have review project outcomes, which we said lasted five days and started after the completion of prototyping, task 12. And finally, we had our review personal performance lasting five days and starting immediately after review project outcomes. So immediately after task 17. So there we have our completed Gantt chart. Once again, our project starts on the 18th of November and finishes after our review activities on the 1st of May. Okay, so if we want to display this or print this, then all we need to do is right click, print, and we're going to have all of the same options as we would normally. Now we can print this to PDF, we can set our page to landscape, we can fit to page or whatever options we choose. But the way that this is actually intended to be used is as more of a working document. So what you would have noticed is on some of these tasks, we can specify when they're complete, or we can also specify what percentage they've been completed. So let's say for argument's sake, we've reviewed the design briefs. Mark that as complete. We've finished project selection. Mark that as complete. And we're carrying out our market research and our cost benefit analysis. Now our market research might only be 50% complete as an example. So we can specify here the percentage of completion. And our cost benefit analysis, we may have only just started. So we may only be 20% complete there. Now what we can see is as we're using this as a working document, we're able to keep track of where we're up to at any given stage. We can always move tasks, we can change the scheduled start and end dates, but this actually enables us to keep a constant track of where we're up to. There is also that facility in Microsoft Project Professional, or the local version, but there's lots of additional benefits of working on the cloud-based version. We can set up notifications and so on to ensure that projects are being kept on track. But these are some of the more advanced features. In this video, the intention was just to give you an outline of how this can be used and to outline some of the benefits associated with using this approach rather than the locally installed version of Microsoft Project.